All data for SpaceX Starship Flight 9 points to a launch window opening on May 19th. Now, the U.S. Coast Guard has issued a marine warning for that date, with the window stretching from 6 p.m. to 8.34 p.m. Central Time. Back updates running through the end of the month. Now, the FAA has also released new airspace warnings, expanding the risk zones to cover areas near Cuba and also the Bahamas. This is the first time that those regions have been included in Starship's NOTAMs, which shows just how far the vehicle's trajectory and the potential debris fields have extended as the program matures. Now, the run-up for Flight 9 has not been without setbacks, though. On May 6, Ship 35 static fire test ended with an explosion near the engine section, forcing SpaceX to swap out a Raptor engine and also conduct further inspections of the vehicle. It was a possible methane feed line issue or a combustion instability issue. Now, the FAA will have to review and approve the repairs before the final launch green light is given, so there's a real possibility the date could slip deeper into May if more issues arise. Now, on the hardware front, Flight 9 is packed with upgrades. Booster 14 is making its second trip to the pad, and this time it's loaded with 29 Raptor engines that have already flown at least once before. That's the highest number of reused engines ever put on a super heavy booster, and three of them are actually on their third flight. SpaceX has reinforced the engine gimbals to reduce vibration and overhauled the methane feed lines to address pressure fluctuations that have caused problems in the past. Now, the hot staging ring, which is critical for separating the booster from the upper stage, has been redesigned with fewer vent holes and better alignment with the grid fins, so the fins are better protected from the blast during separation. Ship 35 brings its own set of challenges, though. It's a Block 2 Starship, which means it features smaller nose-mounted flaps for better control during re-entry and also less heat exposure. The heat shield tiles are a third-generation design with a new mounting system and improved gap fillers to keep them from popping off during the most intense parts of flight. And the avionics have also been upgraded with three independent flight computers now cross-checking data in real time. This is the first time the Starship is flying with triply redundant avionics, and it's a big step toward the kind of fault tolerance needed for future crewed missions. The ground systems at Starbase have also changed a lot since the last flight. Pad B's orbital launch mount is now fully operational, marking a shift to a dual pad setup that should eventually allow for more frequent launches. The water deluge system has been extended to protect the lower half of the launch tower from the full force of 33 Raptor engines firing all at once. And the cryogenic tank farm has also been upgraded, which means propellant can be loaded faster and with less waste. One of the best changes for Flight 9 is the decision not to attempt the tower catch for Booster 14. Instead, the booster will perform a controlled splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico, about 20 miles offshore. Now, this is a strategic move. By skipping the complicated tower catch, SpaceX can focus on collecting clean data about the booster's flight and landing behavior without the added risk of variables and ground-based recovery. It also frees up resources to focus on the upper stage, where persistent issues with re-entry, tile loss, and engine reflight failures have demanded more attention. Now, Ship 35 is expected to follow a trajectory that will take it to a splashdown in the Indian Ocean. And uh, that's after testing its upgraded heat shield and attempting a vacuum Raptor engine relight. Now, that engine relight is a crucial move for future missions that will require orbital refueling or complex return paths. And the last few weeks have also brought some regulatory and weather challenges to Starbase. The expanded FAA risk zones are a sign that SpaceX is being extra cautious, especially with the new flight path and the inclusion of international waters near Cuba and also the Bahamas. Early season tropical weather in the Gulf could also play a role, potentially narrowing the available launch window if conditions change. If SpaceX can prove that reused engines, advanced avionics, and improved heat shields work as intended on this flight, they will be much closer to making the dream of hundreds of flights per year into a reality. If you like this kind of content, please hit the subscribe button.
also like this video, leave a comment down below too. I want to know what you think about this. Do you think Flight 9 will be a success? Will the ship explode again? I don't know. Let me know what you think down in the comments so we can have a talk. Thanks for coming and checking out the show today, everybody. Take care of yourselves and each other. I'll see you in the next one.